Hello, my dear Cancerians. I hope everyone is doing well. I'm Christy, and I'm excited to connect with you guys today. Oops. Um, so, this is regarding the full moon in Taurus. Energy's coming in. We're going to see what's getting revealed, what you need to let go of, what's manifesting, all of that good stuff. Um, to start you out, I got a song for you. It is called The Girl Is On My Mind by The Black Keys. So, somebody's thinking about a girl. And we're going to get a painting at random out of this book. I thought it would be fun. Kind of get uh, a little bit more of a um, personal look at the overall energies. All right. So let's see. Let's see what we got. This is like a huge oracle. Okay, we're going to go towards the middle some more. Just a little bit more. And I wanted to go on this side. Jean, Jean and Paul, or Jean and Paul Limburg. And it is called January. Hmm, interesting. Now we know that in January is when Saturn and Pluto uh, have a conjunction, and it only happens every like. 300 and some years or so, I think. I mean, like, it's a pretty big deal. Everybody's been making a big fuss about it in the astrological world. <clears throat> and I feel like I want to read this. This looks like a feast, a celebration of, of um, some kind of battle that's been won. Okay, let's... Okay, yeah, definitely want to read this because this is talking about constellations and stuff. Very cool. Very cool, Cancer. Okay. <clears throat> so, they say that it is illustrating January, identified by the stellar chart with the constellations of Capricorn and Aquarius. So, those may or may not... Um, Apply to you guys. Take what resonates, right? <clears throat> um, and that's Capricorn here and Aquarius here. Um, this looks like somebody on a bicycle with a star or the lamp. Oh, it's kind of giving me um, hermit vibes. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Uh, the festive banquet depicted in the main scene includes a portrait of the Duke de Berry, who commissioned the manuscript. He is wearing a large fur hat and elaborate blue and gold robe. I guess this is him. Most of the paintings in this book of hours were executed by three brothers who joined the Duke's court in around 1410 and who all died in the same year as their patron. Wow before the manuscript was complete. Their work is praised for its unprecedented attention to everyday detail and for its marvelous sense of narrative. The, a book of hours was used during the Middle Ages as a prayer book for private devotion. It recorded the daily cycle of monastic services throughout the year and this particularly sumptuous example devotes a single page to each month. Wow. I'm getting a lot from this, Cancer. Um, so here's something, you know, this is just another way of me using everyday objects as divination tools. Um, one of the first things I ever did was take a dictionary. I'd ask a question, and I have no idea how the idea occurred to me, but I'd ask a question and just randomly 
go through it and put my, you know, wherever my hand landed, whatever, where, whatever my finger was pointing at was the answer. And so, you know, this was like, kind of just occurred to me the other day when I came across it. I was like, oh, I should do that. Um, just because it adds a little bit more randomness to it, but and um, also, and, and everybody can do it, right? You have yourself a little book like this, you can do it. Get it, use it every day to, you know, get an overall view of the day. It's, it's fun, it kind of builds your, um, your eye for detail. Um, if you were to use a dictionary for words, learning new words, new ways to, you know, ways to apply, you know, thinking. Um, yeah, it's just a great exercise, even if it doesn't actually tell your fortune, which it does. <laughs> it does, but even if it didn't, it would still be useful. It would be, still be fun. Um, but also, finding the magic in every day. You know, this is talking about, you know, paying attention to everyday detail for its marvelous sense of narrative. And it says and, but I just, I took that out for a reason. Because there is magic in every single day. We just have to be looking for it. We have to really get into the present and that's how we're going to make the most that you know this mercury retrograde time can be you know people find it to be heavy and um difficult to get through but if we really sink into our present moments and kind of let you know all this stuff you know because look at these guys they're happy. I mean, like, there's all kinds of stuff going on around them, but they're not worried about all that. They're enjoying their feast here. They're enjoying their celebration. So, there's going to be a lot going on. But, sink into the present moment. Look for the magic in every day. And, um, yeah, it's going to help you get through this. And I feel like things that you're manifesting now, I mean, not that you're not going to see stuff before then, but I think you're really going to see some stuff come through in January. January, um, and until then, look for the magic. All right, we're gonna get a couple cards here. This is for Cancer. For cancer regarding the full moon in Taurus on November 12th. We also have uh, the 1111 portal the day prior. And it happens in the early morning hours of the 12th for us on the East Coast, or, well, in the States. <laughs> West Coast too, it happens in the early morning hours. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna get a couple more cards from uh, this deck. For overall energies. So for Capricorn. Capricorn, uh, Cancer, please forgive me. I want to bring up once again, forgiveness for ourselves, forgiveness for other people. <laughs> All right, and grounding, yeah. Grounding has been a big one. Um, make sure you're getting out in nature. There's, once again, there's gonna be a lot going on. Stay present, that is also grounding. Um, yeah. So, determination and creativity. And, I, I keep getting drawn back to the, the painting. <laughs> um, 
use your, you know, you might be needing determination in many ways. Uh, really, bit, and that really works on your solar plexus, sticking with something through to the end. And you might need to use your creativity and how to um, keep, get that completed. <clears throat> and this grounding, the finding the magic in every day, that is also a creative resource, mind you. And, um, yeah, we'll help you get through it. It's, it's going to be, it's, it's, it's going to be great. It is. <laughs> um, mostly because you are going to have the resources the creativity, the grounding to get through it. And the painting, I am going to um, include the name and everything in the details. All right, Mercury Retrograde, yes. <laughs> it is having an effect. I, I apologize, my dear Cancerians, because um, I know that I'm, I'm excited to, to be here and connected with you guys today. I really am. So please forgive me for calling you by the wrong names. Um, it's Mercury. Mercury retrograde. It's wreaking havoc on me. All right. For my dear Cancerians... We're gonna get some messages regarding the energies coming in with the full moon in Taurus, November 12th. This is for Cancer. Alrighty, okay. Give me kettle. Let's see what we got. Hmm. Okay. Ah, oh, nice. Okay. And the Six of Arrows transition is underneath. So, yeah, I'm seeing it. Okay, so this is what is being illuminated. What can no longer be hidden? And it's the king of bows. And this can be about fighting for domination. It can just be being in um, like spiritual completion. Could be a Kundalini awakening. This kind of reminds me, in the beginning of mine, it felt like something moving in the um, muscles of my abdomen. It was in the, the muscles. And I mean, it was the part that really, like, I was like, what is going on here? Because, like, I, <laughs> it was painful. I was fighting it. I didn't know what was going on. Um, but, yeah. Um, and, like, the first thing that kind of um, really got my attention that seemed weird was, like, after I would eat... You know, and this is what, because, you know, I kind of see, you know, the um, intestines here a little bit. And um, I would think that I was actually feeling like the food and stuff move through my intestines. And I was like, I have never, you know, been able to feel something like that in my entire life. Of what, you know, I, I've never, why am I so in tune with what's going on? And, um, you know, because I just, I didn't really think anything was wrong, you know, different at that point. I just knew, like, 
I didn't normally feel that much, you know, that much going on inside of my body. And as it turns out, then after that was when I started feeling the uh, stuff in my stomach. And I guess, you know, that's, I wanted to explain that in case, um, perhaps that's what's going on with somebody. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't have to be, we're going to get some more, um, clarification, <clears throat> but for somebody that might ring true. And I just want to put that out there. Um, in case somebody's going through something like that, that might be what's going on. And now you're realizing, you know, like I did, I did a research, I, I put the, the, um, what I was experiencing in there and it was like the results, it was nothing but Kundalini awakening stuff. And I was like, huh? What? <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> This, moving on, we'll get in, more into this and we'll get some clarification. This is what you need to release. And, you know, obviously it's a completion of some sort. Um, and a big one. We'll get some more um, clarification on that because that's pretty broad. <laughs> Um, but you, you know, might be coming to the end of a big journey, um, a big lesson and, you know, um, perhaps it's, um, hard to move on from that, but it's time to let it go. We'll get some clarification. Yes, sir. And then this is the transformation and what is emerging and we have the shaman here which is the magician so yes a new start with the one but also a manifestation nice all right oops sorry about that <laughs> making noise all right let us Get some clarification on this stuff. It's pretty big cards. Pretty spiritual. And that would make sense with the Six of Arrows. Sacral, creativity. Also a completion. 10. Oopsie. Okay. I just wanted to come out and ask anything, but we'll look at them anyway. Ten of Cups with the Devil. Perhaps that is a completion that um, you might not be really wanting to let go of. We're putting it back in there, though, because I didn't get... I didn't say anything yet. This, this is for cancer. This is for cancer regarding the full moon and Taurus. Occurring on November 12th, 2000. And look, the world on the bottom there. Yep. That's two worlds, two tens. So far, that have come out, you know, that have shown their face to us. <laughs> All right, and the magician. All right, guys, you're feeling pretty magical right now. You're feeling pretty magical. All right, so let's get clarification for Cancer on the King of Bows in the illumination position. What, why is this here? Okay. Mm. Strength is underneath. Uh -huh. So, a victory. 
victory of sorts. Hmm. But this is um, a completion. Perhaps leaving the home. Um, yeah, people here are gossiping. But you've got the strength. Um, yeah, and the Six of Wands is always about, you know, a victory at, you know, that's hard won, right? So perhaps this was like the end of a marriage or, you know, in the, in your, you've come out on top, you know, the domination. It took a lot of strength, a lot of inner strength to get here. Um, and people are finding out about it. It's coming out in the open. Perhaps it, you'd kept it under wraps and now it's being exposed. And if this is the, in the case of some people going through a Kundalini awakening, it's your world kind of getting turned upside down. And if you tell people they're gonna have <laughs> lots of opinions, believe me. I made the mistake of telling um, a few of my close friends and they proceeded to um, think it was a big joke. <laughs> um, it's just, it's hard for people to wrap their heads around. And for some of you people out there listening to this, I'm sure you're feeling the same way. It's hard to wrap your heads around, I know. But it's real, I promise. Um, but you will have the strength to get through this. Whether it be people gossiping about you, leaving um, your marriage, your this relate, you know, very stable um, place. Um, this is a victory, regardless. Um, because the Six of Wands is typically being in the public eye as well. And you do have the strength to get through it. Determination. All right. And you are moving into, like, that's two sixes too. Um, Harmony. And the Ace of Vessels was underneath there. So that's two ones. That's, um, could be a new love. Could be, um, be the beginning of loving oneself. I see, I see um, the Ace of Vessels, Ace of Cups as one love, you know, universal love. And that's the big, at least the beginning of the understanding of that. All right, let's get into the world tree. Why is the world tree here in the position of what needs to be let go? In the release position. Let's clarify why the world tree is here. Ooh. Ten of Swords, Page of Cups, Nine of Wands, Two of Pentacles, and the Empress. All right. So, it looks like an apology comes in. Balance. Balance. 
and you're exhausted, but you you're going to be a you you've you've got you've got it under control. You're almost there. And you could be juggling some things. You're trying to find the balance there. But I think with the Empress showing up here, I think that, yeah. <clears throat> You'll make it. You'll make it through here. And the Ten of Swords. An ending, a painful ending, which is why, you know, it's hard to let go sometimes. <clears throat> um, Page of Cups can also sometimes be a surprise, a happy surprise. And with the Shaman over here, you know, I feel like you do have a surprise coming. Once you let go, you know... And this could even be forgiving yourself. Um, and if you are going through realizing that you are going through an awakening, this could just this could actually mean the ending of the way that you have seen life thus far. Because your life literally gets turned upside down. And this Empress would be the divine energy that is um, has been released inside of you. This is the awakening of new psychic powers, new way of, you know, learning how to move through this new world and it will be exhausting absolutely exhausting and um, learning how to balance in this new way of being yeah okay <clears throat> wow what two completely different stories but they both fit <laughs> quite well <laughs> Okay, um, and yeah, I mean, it's scary. I just want to say, um, but remember that this is divine energy moving through you. And you, you know, it's the ending of one part of life and the beginning of another all in one. And that's for both sides of the story. And it's beautiful and divine or else these cars wouldn't be showing up here. Okay? <clears throat> All right. There. I apologize for that. Got interrupted. However, I think it was for a good reason. Um, there were a couple things that happened. But I'm back in your energy. Yes, my cancers. You know, I have three planets in cancer. Mercury is one of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's painful sometimes and it's really hard letting go of ego, of letting go of just the way that we feel like we're supposed to be in the world, learning this new balance. It's a completely new balance that you have to figure out. Um, and if you are going through this, also I wanted to say, do if you're going through this, if you've got some similar symptoms as to what I have, um, by all means, go get checked out. Um, make sure it's not anything else. Um, but my best advice to you is if you feel like an energy kind of working its way up through your muscles and such, surrender to it. Surrender to it. It's only here to help you and, um, fighting it makes it a lot more painful. <laughs> 
All right. So I just wanted to say that really quick. Also, uh, please subscribe because I'm going to be doing some videos specifically for um, people going through an awakening, especially the beginning parts of it because I know I struggled and um, yeah, I could have used some guidance that was directly from spirit and not um, because there's so much out there that is written by people who don't know the first thing about it, okay? All right, I'm gonna stop. So I know that not everybody else, not everybody here is going through that. And um, yeah, we'll move on. All right, so the shaman. The shaman in the manifestation um, position. And, ugh, my cat is scratching on a box out here. Hold on. Come on, let's go. Come on. All right. The shaman. Shaman. For cancer. All right. Spirit, why is the shaman here in the transformation position? What is emerging? Ooh, that's a lot. Okay. I'll leave it right here. So we see two fours. Okay. Oh, the Queen and the King of Cups. Uh-oh, what have y'all been manifesting? <laughs> oh my God. And the star with the Four of Pentacles. All right. So a solid foundation. Healing. And this could be either <clears throat> um, on the um, material plane or um, in internally. This balancing of feminine and masculine. If you're going through a spiritual awakening, that is very much um, part of it. <clears throat> Healing, having um, a solid foundation. Um, one of the things that, um, and maybe this is somebody supporting you in that situation. Um, so, okay, well, let me, and we also have the four of wands, I mean, four of swords here. Interesting, interesting that I would say that. <laughs> At any rate, we've got two fours here, which is um, stability, um, the ability to rest, having a solid foundation. So, um, and this could be for anybody. Um, for some of you that are getting out of um, a marriage, this is manifesting um, your counterpart a new relationship that is is calming, healing, um, stable. Um, and then we've got, you know, the star with the four swords here. So it's just really um, the ability to uh, seek um, respite, right? place of calm to always go to. Um, so that's for the people that are, you know, getting out of a marriage. That is part of what's emerging. Um, and that could be within yourself or on the material plane. For those that are going through a spiritual awakening, it's amazing how um, many times I've heard stories of people going through it, and I found it to be true for myself. You will be supported. You will have a place of stability. Um, 
it's very often that you don't have to work. And this, these fours coming up are making me think that perhaps that's even going to be for four years. Everybody's different. Some people work all the way through it. Um, I've heard a lot of people, but I think it, it ends up being longer for them. Um, but who knows? Who knows? All right. At any rate, you will be taken care of. And for those that are getting out of the marriage, you will find um, your counterpart um, eventually. I don't know if that's already coming in for some of you. So maybe it is. <laughs> um, others, you are just go you're going to be very balanced within yourself. You're not going to need that, which is beautiful. It's that self love, that ace of vessels. Moving into this beautiful, and like, oh, I didn't even think about the moon being there. Aww. <laughs> so, yeah. Nice. Okay. I'm going to get some parting guidance, and I do um, advise you to stay for it because. Uh, these the angels and ancestors oracle always ties up everything very nicely and I did shuffle these ahead of time so and I just do one more shuffle okay this is just lovely though beautiful 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 okay okay this is for cancer parting guidance for cancer please you want me to take this one? Ah, yes. See beyond the current situation. Hmm. And summer. Bask in joy and light. All right. We are going to read from this one. Look beyond your current situation. Raise your vibration and focus on love. Um, okay, I'm going to read all of it. Most indigenous people have a seer in the family or tribe. Seers are the intelligent and intuitive beings who serve as direct channels for information on what's occurring now and what's about to unfold. Their energy isn't about predicting your future for you but about showing you how your intentions are creating it. A true seer will help you see that your intentions can change. Therefore, so can your future. The message of this card is to let the clairvoyant within you rise up so that you can see the way forward yourself with your spiritual eyes. Clairvoyance isn't about just about predicting the future. It's about being able to see clearly enough to create your best future. You are being encouraged by ans your ancestral guides and angels to see beyond what you think is happening now. Don't allow your ego or doubts to play games with you. Instead of seeing yourself as stuck or lost, know you're in an energetic holding space while the universe recalibrates a path that is more favorable for you. Angels of light are upgrading your energy so your experiences can be more enjoyable. You are moving towards something extremely uplifting and enlightening. So stay calm and keep your eyes on the prize. Nice, see? And it did. Um, uh, because the world tree, you're not wanting to, you know, you're needing to let go of this. And it's difficult. Right, we've talked about that, but look at these beautiful things that are coming to you that are emerging. Uh, I just want to ch -ch -ch. 
Rise up, open your wings and shine. Bring your projects and plans out into the light, into manifestation. This is the perfect opportunity for you to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Light has come to banish the darkness. Clarity is arriving too, allowing you to know exactly where you are and how you can move forward. Angels and ancestor guides are encouraging you to enjoy this moment and not to rush forward because this is a time for pleasure, enjoyment, and expansion. There is a great chance that you have extra energy, creativity, and inspiration at this time. Notice what is coming to you as it is inspiration directly from the divine. Beautiful. Okay, I think that sums it up, guys. Um, yeah. Beautiful Cancer. Um, I wish you luck with all of this. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. Let me know um, how this resonates for you, um, etc. and so forth. And I do look forward to connecting with you again. Thank you, Cancer. Love and peace to you.